in this age of disinformation and, and misinformation, the black press uh, has always stood at the doorway of making sure that we are portrayed accurately and fairly throughout the media. Uh, as journalists, uh, in, in I've worked in the mainstream media for uh, more than 25 years uh, 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 before going freelance and starting FrontRunnerNewJersey.com, and we are, we are the first drafts of history. And, and I can tell you firsthand, many times, if we're not there uh, writing th those stories, there is a great chance that we will not be portrayed accurately. So the Black press has always been around uh, to portray us uh, a, 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 in a way that we deserve to be portrayed, and actually tell stories that are often forgotten. Uh, and, but even but but even in that vein, are still important in history. Uh, so, so what I'm hoping, for, uh, what will happen in this uh, uh, session here is to not only talk about the black press, but also stress the importance of why uh, we need to be engaged with you, and you need to be engaged with us. I can't tell you. I've run front runner New Jersey for three years now, and I can't tell you the disappointment that I've had, where I've had very prominent African American leaders uh, go to the uh, uh, go to the mainstream media instead of the uh, of the black media for stories and different events, and 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 and, and then uh, find in this May afterwards why they weren't uh, 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 portrayed accurately or in a fashion they felt that they deserved. That is what we are here for, and we are here to, uh, uh, because we want to tell your stories, we want to hear your stories, and we want to be involved involved in, uh, in your stories. And, and, and there are a lot of components to this, because there is an active effort right now to rewrite history uh, and to use this information and misinformation to, uh, to get our community to do things and react to things that are counter to our, uh, uh, to our best interests. And that is a, a, one of the main reasons uh, uh, that the Black press, and I will argue, is more important now than probably any other time in history. Uh, 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 we we need to be there to correct all the information that's out. Uh, uh, the internet is a wonderful thing, and the internet is a dangerous thing uh, because it's kind of a wild west of information. And in that wild west of information, we all need a place where uh, uh, to, uh, where we can rely and know that this information is not only accurate and not only created. Uh, a, 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 uh, to, to give us the right information, but with the right reasons involved, because uh, they know how important this information is uh, to our history. Uh, so uh, uh, that's my opening statements, and, and, I, and I will talk a lot more about FrontRunnerNewJersey.com and, and, and how it, it came into being. Uh, one of our panelists, Al Thomas, uh, had a uh, Family emergency, so so he he won't be with us today. But we have two great panelists uh, today. Uh, it, it, one is Cassandra uh, Atn, and she is with the Center for Cooperative Media at Montclair State State uh, University, where and, and she's going to talk about an initiative uh, that I was a part of, and, and it is just starting. It's called the South Jersey Information Project, uh, which seeks to boost uh, uh, African-American media voices in South Jersey. And, and, and she also is starting her own digital publication in Newark. Um, our second panelist is uh, Kenneth Miles, uh, he is uh, the editor of the Trenton Journal. Uh, that is a publication that you can find on the Facebook Bulletin uh, platform, which is which, which was just started by Facebook to promote independent journalists, and they specifically sought sought out uh, uh, African American, Lat Latino, and other minority journalists. And I'm very fortunate to be part of the 
the, the, the bulletin platform as well. So from there in those opening statements, we hope to get in to some of the nitty gritty, and in, in, in especially this election season, because things are already crazy and things are already, uh, 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 <laughs> has, we have seen the examples of why we need the black press. Uh, you know, just one uh, example that, that I've been harping on for, uh, for a while now, because it's taken on such serious amplifications is, is that you've heard a lot about critical race theory. And, 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 and there are states out there who have created laws, created laws on, on information that, 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 that is completely bogus and unfounded, but promoted by some members of, of the uh, of the mainstream media. It, and, and it is one of the clear examples of why the black press is needed to be able to stand as a vanguard when we see the, the, this such outrageous misinformation and disinformation uh, of, of, around the country. So uh, I'm hoping that, that this session is a jumping, uh, a, a, a jumping off point in that. And, and hopefully at the end of this session, I'm, uh, with ev everyone involved, I only ask one thing, take down our information, take down our websites, uh, click us on, uh, look through our websites and, 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 and spread that information because uh, you know, those views are, are vitally important to us in our growth. And, and, and we believe with the work that we're doing that it's going to be vitally important for you to see the information that we're gathering uh, on, on, on behalf of our communities so you can be informed and you have the right information. So with uh, uh, that, uh, I, I would like to start, I see Cassandra is on the line and I, I, and I would like to turn over the floor uh, to her uh, to talk about her work at the Center of Cooperative Media and in her own website. Thank you so much, Clyde. Um, I'm so happy to join you all and participate um, in this year's NAACP New Jersey State Conference and to join this um, workshop on Black media. Thank you to Clyde for your kind invitation to participate. Um, and to all of you who are joining us for today's session. Um, as Clyde mentioned, my name is Cassandra Etienne. I'm the Assistant Director for Membership and Programming at the Center uh, for Collaborative Media, um, which is based at Montclair State University. Uh, it's a new role for me. Um, I'm, I'm in about two months now. Uh, it's a very exciting time getting to learn more about the New Jersey news ecosystem um, and meet members um, like Mr. Hughes and Mr. Miles, who are on the panel with me. Um, so a little bit about the center. Um, the center's mission is to grow and strengthen local journalism um, for the benefit of New Jersey residents. Um, our flagship project is New Jersey News Commons. Um, basically, it's a network of um, media outlets across the state, including hyperlocal digital um, publishers, public media, nonprofits, television, radio, and newspaper organizations. We have over um, 300 members um, presently. And we all work together on collaborative projects and we share content and we support one another. Uh, the center is a grant funded initiative at Montclair State. Um, that being the case, uh, what we offer to our members is free of charge. So uh, if anyone listening in is interested in you know, being a part of the commons, um, benefiting from our services, please check us out, centerforcooperativemedia.org. Um, as a member, there are no dues um, or payments to join. Um, we just ask that members participate and continue to foster that sense of community. Um, so a little bit about our offerings at the center. Um, they include trainings, networking opportunities that we conduct um, um, and organize with the help of um, our partners, assistance with grant applications, development of fellowships, um, and business and journalism coaching. Um, with uh, the last panel um, front of mind, um, just a snapshot of the resources and services that we provide to those covering COVID-19 in New Jersey. Uh, we have an arrangement with NJ Spotlight to provide coverage, um, uh, to provide all of its COVID-19 statewide stories for republication um, on sites um, um, owned and operated by New Jersey Commons members at no cost. 
Um, we have daily communication of COVID-19 related journalism resources, um, including funding opportunities. Uh, we have translation of COVID-19 content into Spanish, English, and Korean. And we've created a fellowship to support ethnic media reporters covering COVID-19, as well as a fellowship to support freelancers covering COVID-19 in their communities. Um, so in my role, uh, I'm in frequent contact with members of the New Jersey News Commons um, to discuss their progress, any challenges, and how the center um, can better support their initiatives and contributions as part of New Jersey's news ecosystem. Um, there, I was going to talk about a few of the pro programs that I manage, um, but I'll just name them briefly. There's the Loved and Lost Initiative, which um, we um, conduct in partnership with NorthJersey.com. It's a statewide uh, media collaboration that names and um, celebrates the lives of those who um, passed, uh, who succumbed to COVID-19. We also have the Diverse Sources Database, which is a new project of ours um, in conjunction with NJ Advanced Media, which produces content for NJ.com. And the goal of this resource is um, to help journalists um, in New Jersey diversify their sources and connect with um, a myriad of experts to make the news coverage more inclusive and reflected, uh, reflective of the communities that we serve and, and that we cover. Um, and then I'll get to the initiative that um, Clyde mentioned before, which is the South Jersey Information Equity Project, which has a lot of bearing um, as for the subject of this panel, Black Media. Um, so we launched uh, this project in April of 2020, last year, uh, with the Philadelphia Association of Black Journalists. And it's to address media inequity in South Jersey, um, specifically by seeking to improve the quality and the quantity of news and, from, and information produced by and for communities of color. Uh, in the first phase, uh, we hired veteran journalist and South Jersey resident, Sarah Glover. She assessed the news landscape for Black communities and journalists. Um, and as far as her research, she identified um, a clear need for more resources to elevate the skills and visibility of Black journalists in South Jersey, um, the need for more information sharing and storytelling by and for communities, um, by and for Black communities, and the need for more support for Black-led media ventures. So we're currently in phase two, um, the South Jersey uh, Information Equity Project aims to support and elevate Black journalists and media makers, specifically in Camden, Gloucester, and Burlington counties, um, to connect them with resources, funding, and platforms, um, platform partners to share their work. I should also note that we're currently hiring for a project coordinator position based in South Jersey. So if any of this sounds of interest to you, or if you know someone who might be of interest, please um, visit sjiep.org for more information um, and share it with your network. And as Clyde mentioned, um, in addition to my work at the center, I'm also the co-founder um, and managing editor for Public Square. It's a local news site based out of Newark, um, publicsquare.org, which launches in October. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, it will cover local news um, stories with global connections. It will center civics, justice, and the immigrant experience with a focus on voices and stories of the Afro-Caribbean diaspora. So. Um, this project has great personal significance to me um, as a Haitian American. Um, such stories are of increasing urgency um, and importance um, um, to me. And I'm just motivated by the chance to foster community through our coverage of cultural traditions, um, of social issues such as civil rights, environmental justice, access to health care um, and reforms. Um, these are stories that resonate um, with locals as well as um, immigrant families here, as they do with our friends and family um, in our mother countries or countries of origin. Um, so um, I should just, another note about the publication is um, I'm proud to launch this newsroom in collaboration with two other Black women, um, Josie Gonzalez and Linda Carter, um, who between us draw on decades of um, experience in fieldwork and journalism nonprofit um, and community organizing sectors. So I uh, hope that wasn't too long winded. That was a little bit about myself, my work at the center um, and the forthcoming publication, publicsquare.org. Um, I thank you all for listening to me. Please um, visit 
centerforcooperativemedia.org to learn more about our resources. And feel free to reach out to me and connect with us um, about how the center might, like how we might work together to support black media um, and promote racial equity and fairness in our newsrooms and also um, in how our communities are covered and portrayed in the media. Thank you. Cassandra, thank you very, very much. And, and she even gave you a, a, a job hook up there. <laughs> so if any of you are looking for a, for a J, she uh, gave, gave you something that uh, we are looking for uh, 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 to get that project off the ground. Uh, Cassandra, if you can, if you could uh, put the link to the center in your publication uh, in the chat session, and, and we will do that again at the end of the chat session. So, so everyone who's uh, attending this can have our websites. Uh, 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 Kenneth, if you if you can do the same thing, uh, I'd like to introduce to you Kenneth Miles, uh, 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 who is with uh, the Trenton Journal on uh, of, of, of face on the Facebook uh, bulletin platform, and he will talk a little bit about. Uh, uh, of that and what he's doing and how he got into the journalism bill and, and, and why he thinks the black press is important. Kenneth, you're on, you're on the line. All right. I just want to uh, thank everyone for um, inviting me to participate. I'm in really good company. Clyde, you did a great introduction. Um, so who I am, um, first of all, I am a father to a beautiful young daughter. I am an entrepreneur and a veteran journalist. Uh, I've been a journalist for over 26 years. And um, I started out writing a weekly column for my local newspaper based out in Jersey City, which is called the Jersey Journal. Started that at 15 years old, youngest person to, youngest person to ever write for that newspaper in the history of, um, of, of the newspaper. So um, from there, I went on um, to intern at several places such as Black Enterprise, I interned over at Rolling Stone. I was the editor over at The Source Magazine. So I have a lot of experience in journalism and writing. And um, for a while I left and I started, I was the founding partner at a co-working space that's based in North called Third Space, which is a boutique family uh, run and owned uh, co-working space in Newark, New Jersey. So I did that for a while. And how I got back into journalism was the Center for Cooperative Media. I managed a grant called the Newark uh, Peer Learning Grant. And there were five grantees who, who awarded a total of $10,000 each to help address some of the information needs that was going on in, in Newark, such as food insecurity, housing, um, people who needed information about housing, affordable housing, people who needed information about how to find food, how to pay their electricity, uh, electric bill. These grantees, they provided um, very creative ways to help fill in that information gaps for uh, that particular project. So as I was doing it, um, I was in a process of moving from Essex County into Trenton. And before I moved into Trenton, I you know, like anybody else would, you know, I did my research and I couldn't find anything that gave me a sense of what it was like to live out in Trenton. Now I have some family members who I used to visit as a, as a young boy. Um, and that's all I remember about Trenton, New Jersey, but from people who I asked, you know, what do you think about Trenton? The first thing I heard from somebody who used to live in Trenton was don't move there. And it made it seem like I was moving to a war-torn country. But um, when, when I went here, I, I moved into a great community and it felt like home. And it also reminded me of where I grew up in Jersey City, where a lot of people um, said a lot of disparaging things about Jersey City, but they weren't from the, they weren't from the city. They didn't know the community. And it just reminded me of feeling dismissed um like my voice wasn't heard because i lived in a particular community so i started the trenton journal um out of a need to fill in the information gaps in the city as well as to amplify some of the voices 
So I'm proud to say that we've done, we started, I started in November and like we've, we've done some great stories. And one in particular that I'm proud of is a story that we did on uh, the late Dr. Selma Burke. I just so happened to, I was around the corner from my home and I saw this gentleman, I needed some work done in my house. I told him I was a journalist and he got excited and he asked me if I, if I ever heard of Dr. Selma Burke. And I was like, the name sounds like it uh, sounds familiar, but she's the woman who did the bass relief portrait of, um, of Roosevelt, but she never got credit for it. So he had an exclusive interview with her. Um, he taped the interview in the 90s. It's so maybe like two hours long. And one of the things that he told me, he, um, he was good friends with Dr. Selma Burke. He, she was sort of like a mentor to him, was that she wanted her story told. She didn't want to be forgotten about. And um, so I felt in a way that by publishing that story, I was able to help continue her legacy. You know, just being a woman um, back in that day, she didn't get her just due. And this is one of the reasons why I'm doing what I do. It's important, not only to tell stories, but if you don't have the right information, um, it can deny you a lot of things. It could deny you uh, access to healthcare. It could deny you the ability to um, take care of your family. There's a lot of information and it should not be considered a privilege to have access to that information. And now, and I also think that is important to like right now, I started back in newspapers and, there, and, and now everything seems to be, uh, people find out the information from various sources. You have people who find out information from WhatsApp, a lot of um, people um, who come to this country from um, different places like, uh, you know, Africa, they, they, they communicate via WhatsApp. You also have people who communicate via Instagram and Facebook. Now that's all good, but what, what, what I pride myself in doing as a journalist is fact checking, which is crucial. Fact checking and original reporting. That's really important. You know, um, I'm a, I'm a one man band. Um, I have a lot of great people who, a, a great team behind me, but it's, it's, it's important to say that it, we have to tell our own stories because if we don't, who's going to do it? And, and what do our stories look like in somebody else's eye? You know, so um, I will continue to to shine a light and amplify voices in the community of Trenton, New Jersey, such as people like Lakeisha Sutton, who was a former professional back basketball player for the Harlem Globetrotters. You have people like um, Evan Harris, who is 21 years old, and he opened up his own retail store in Trenton, New Jersey, because he lost his job during the pandemic. You have him, you have Dr. Selma Burke. I will continue to tell her story. I will continue to tell people's story, like to get the information that they need, such as um, Dr. Purnell, thank you. You know, so I, I understand as a community, we have a lot of questions that we need the answers to, right? So it's not, um, and I believe in an honest discussion. A lot of people are hesitant because there is a lot of misinformation out there. So I'm like, let's let's talk about it. And I want people to have that platform where they feel comfortable and not bullied, right? Um, to be able to tell their stories. So um, before I close, I just wanna say that I think we all need your support. And when I say support, I mean, just even subscribe, let us know what we're doing. How can we help you? tell your story, uh, what needs to be told. Because again, and I think Clyde, you alluded to this, like um, if we're not telling our stories, who's gonna do it? And it's essential, you know, to keep us going, we, we, we need the support of our own community. Thank you. Uh, can, can I thank you? Great, uh, you and Sandra, great, great met. Uh, messages. I just want to give a little bit of, uh, of my background before we uh, uh, can continue. And I will admit, I, I am probably the old head in the group. I've been a working journalist for all of my adult life. Uh, in, in, and that's on the, the plus side of 25. And, and I'll just leave, <laughs> leave it there. I uh, I uh, continued to, to work freelance uh, when I did uh, public relations for 10 years and, and came back to journalism. Uh, when I arrived here in New Jersey, one, one of the things uh, that I noticed is, is that 
South Jersey is a news desert. Now, that's that's kind of a newsy geek term, but for, for all the attendees, you need to understand what a news desert is. Uh, it, it, it is a place where very little original reporting goes on because uh, 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 the news outlets have shrunk. Uh, 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 the city of Millville is not served by a daily newspaper. Uh, you have large cities in South Jersey that are not served by a daily newspaper. They depend on uh, uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer uh, to, to, to get their daily news. Uh, in, in, when I first started Front Runner New Jersey, I noticed that uh, 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 the city of, of, of Bridgeton, their school district, they, they lost their superintendent. And I figured, wow, that's strange. I didn't even hear about that. So I went to the daily newspaper, which is in Vineland, uh, it, but their tasks of covering all, all the county to find out, huh, well, I wonder what the story was. I wonder what reporter went to the school board meeting to cover that. And there was nothing. There wasn't even a brief about it. And then a couple of months later, they hired a new superintendent, this brother out of Washington, D.C., uh, uh, Keith Miles. I've been wondering, Ash, you can't, can't know if you guys are related or not. Uh, and uh, again, I went to that daily newspaper uh, to find out, you know, what kind of write-up they had on him. Uh, he, he, and, and, and again, till this day, if we, if you were dependent on a daily newspaper or a daily news outlet to, to, to find out uh, 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 the, the new superintendent at, at, at British and public schools, you will not find it because that was not covered in the daily uh, press. So I went out at, 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 as front runner New Jersey uh, uh, and, and I covered them and it ended up being one of my best read stories because one, a lot of people outside of Bridgeton didn't know <laughs> uh, that they had a superintendent change, and it wasn't covered. There, there, there isn't a, a a TV news station that covers that that covers South Jersey. There is not one TV news station in South Jersey, which means uh, you need either a murder or or a politician uh, being brought up on bribery charges <laughs> to, to get TV coverage, you get TV news coverage out of South Jersey. Uh, so, it, and that's just the mainstream media. We, and we haven't even delved into the coverage of my minorities in South Jer uh, Jersey, uh, which is even worse. So there was an opportunity there uh, to, to, to start covering uh, news in in south jersey uh, you know it it's been well received uh, and i mentioned this before uh, it a lot of us are still in the habit if we have events if we have uh special occasions if, if someone's getting hired or fired or something like that the first reaction is to run to the mainstream press and uh, pa pass up the african-american media and i would like to uh, start to change that dynamic where the public, you guys out there watching us right now, uh, start to contact us and engage in us because we're looking to engage it with you. We're and, and, and we're hoping that you start to engage in us um, uh, in, in 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 coverage of, of your stories and have and having you guys check out our websites and in uh, seeing what we're doing. Uh, 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 day after day and week after week. So uh, that's kind of my continued pitch, and, and you will hear that a few more times before we leave here. Uh, but I just want to stress that uh, 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 we need uh, the public, uh, you guys, uh, to really engage us uh, 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 in as we move along and, and try to grow uh our outlets and also present uh, uh, uh present the news in our communities cassandra and you talked a little bit about this in uh in in your opening of, 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 about being a person of, of of haitian descent and 
there's a lot of stuff going on in Haiti now. As a matter of fact, there was a news report that I saw. If you're keeping up with the news, there's a situation in in, in Del, Del Rio, Texas, where, where 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 they have closed off the border uh, 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 because of uh, the the number of immigrants crossing the border. The thing that blew me away is that many of those immigrants were from Haiti. As, uh, uh, in, in, and people may not understand that. That uh, 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 Cassandra, can you talk? Uh, you, you know, with that as a backdrop, can you talk about how important it is for us to get accurate? information, especially when people will dredge up all kind of stereotypes when they hear news like that. How important is it for a, for a person like you with, with, with your experience and background to be able to deliver accurate information to the public? Sure, thank you, Clyde. Um, so, you know, that, you know, these developments in Haiti and also at the border, as you mentioned, um, speak to um, how inaccurately and um, unfairly um, uh, groups um, and this, this disproportionately impacts um, black and brown communities, how um, they can be portrayed in the media. So there's a lot of um, misinformation and disinformation um, that's going on. And I think that it is, you know, the work of the black press um, to kind of change and challenge some of those prevailing and problematic narratives. <laughs> So there are, you know, we know there are persistent issues um, with how black and brown communities are covered. And I'll just like list a few things. I mean, there there is misinformation that targets our communities in terms of COVID-19. There is um, historically media have preserved the status quo um, in terms of the marginalization of communities. Media outlets and coverage have upheld discrimination in terms of class, geography, ethnicity, gender, language, culture, and they dehumanize black and brown people. And, in much of the coverage. And, uh, you know, we're seen as like purveyors of crime, as you alluded to, Clyde, and a strain on our society um, because of our like dependence on government aid. Um, they've misrepresented events. There's something that um, we're looking at now for um, the public score site in which there are four brothers who were um, essentially buffed up by um, plain clothes or um, undercover uh, police officers. Um, and it was described as a mob attacking the police. And if you look at the footage that was captured, um, you see that that's, you know, that's arguable um, um, at best, right? So media have underreported certain traumas, including um, healthcare and education equality, um, and they've missed opportunities to share resources and report on solutions. Um, and also in terms of the structure and the system itself, um, for example, in um, some traditional outlets or many traditional outlets have underpaid reporters and the media system has operated in a way that limits the number of um, black and brown owned media to begin with. Um, so for, for me, as I, as I alluded to earlier, it's um, when I think of how immigrants and immigrant communities are sometimes covered in the media, it's, it's abhorrent and it feeds um, certain misconceptions um, um, in the general public, and it has lasting impact, not just in public perception, but also how policy is shaped. So I think the more that we can kind of um, harness um, our ability to tell our own stories um, and, and tell it right, that that's the, that'll benefit us as um, community members. And that'll also hopefully signal to um, perhaps larger um, news and media entities that they need to shift some of their practices and how they, you know, how they approach covering um, Black communities um, in particular. So, I mean, that's, those are my, just like an initial response to your question, Platt, I, I hope that I addressed. You have a new publication that's just starting. Uh, what do you need from the public? Or what do you hope to, uh, to gain from the public that would help your publication the most. Can you talk a little bit about that uh, in, 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 in your engagements in the public and in, in, in what would help the Trenton Journal uh, report on the, the African-American community in Trenton? Clyde, that's a great question. Um, immediately, I would say is right now, building community. That's, that's I'm not asking for any money. I'm doing this all free, um, using my own resources 
thank God I've been able to receive some grants from the New Jersey Civic Consortium. Uh, I got a grant from the New York Association of Black Journalists to do stories on COVID-19 in the Trenton area. And so what, what I'm doing right now is just building, just building, letting people know we're, we're doing quality work. This is not, a, we're not just rehashing a press release. It's, we're not just retweeting stories. Th these are original reports that we're doing. So right now, that's all I need. Just subscribe, follow us at trentonjournal.com. We're very active on Instagram. We're, we're on Facebook. I just got to deal with uh, Facebook, Facebook Bulletin as well. So they're, you know, they've, they've been very instrumental and in help guide me build the community that I want to get within Trenton, New Jersey and the surrounding areas as well, such as Ewing, Philadelphia, Hamilton. Um, let us know what you would like to see. You know, um, that's, that's all, that's, that's my ax right now. I think that's the best way you can support me is and support other people who are on, who are on this panel is to subscribe, like, let us know what we're doing, what you would like to um, see more of and how we can help you. All right, uh, uh, thank you. I just posted a column that we did on, on critical race uh, theory in just the outlandish uh, uh, hysteria around it. Uh, in despite of that hysteria, in despite of all of the misinformation that could be easily debunked, states are still passing laws, literally outlawing crit uh, critical race theory. So, so, so I just wanted to put that out. Now, I, I, but, but I want to get to uh, questions. Uh, Marcus, I know you've you've got a question, so I'll uh, let you go. Uh, uh, okay. Go ahead and ask that. Thank right you. Now. Thank you so much, Clyde. Um, as as one of the South Jersey um, chapters and um, Southern Burlington County, we, we do events all the time and we put out press releases and we have a huge press list. And I can tell you without any hesitation that front runner is who who, who um, responds. And unfortunately, um, as was pointed out, when something negative happens, like when this protest happened, we literally were contacted by over 50 publications and we were on all of those different publications because that's when they come around but i asked them after these interviews i say will you be here for something positive too because it seems you only show up when something negative is happening so when we when we know that's the landscape and we know how important um black media is and black stories being told what can major organizations do or what can local organi organizations do to help create like a um, like a supportive situation so that we still have our stories told. Like, because we understand we live in an expensive state. Um, respect to Kenneth for doing it for the love, but Kenneth's got rent and, you know, bills too. So we, what kind of structure can like major organizations put together so that we ensure that our Black publications um, exist and can con continue to be around and tell our stories? Uh, I will take the first stab at that, and I definitely want Kenneth and Cassandra to to, to jump jump in as well. And geez, this is going to sound so self serving, but <laughs> supporting the black media is uh, is one thing. Because as a journalist and, and as a mainstream journalist, I can tell you, hey, you know, because I'm still in in, in contact with a, a lot of my friends and and, and and colleagues in the press. We're very competitive, and one of the things that we don't like is getting beat on good stories. <laughs> so, so even though uh, getting in contact with the black media, and some of you guys are, are, are probably out there thinking, well, they're not as large as the press of Atlantic City and the Philadelphia in, in, in Inquirer, but trust me, those guys are reading us because they're, they're they're looking for stories and they don't want the last thing they want is for us to beat them on a story so uh, so 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 by by maintaining your contact with us and giving us stories uh, 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 that's kind of one of the things that kind of pokes these uh lump, lumbering giants there uh, uh also uh, you uh, 
there's nothing like badgering <laughs> uh, in, in, in badgering in force. If you have one nonprofit uh, constantly call, calling the mainstream media, that's one thing. If, if you have five or six uh, 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 badgering uh, 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 about the same story, they have to listen. And again, we're a competitive bunch. We don't want to get beat on good stories. Uh, 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 so uh, so that, that, that constant drum beat tends to help a lot in, 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 in improving new, news coverage. Now, and in, 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 in don't be shy. To, uh, to send them stories about good news coverage. Never ever think your story is too small to, to, uh, 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 to get into a publication, regardless how big the publication or how small the publication. If you think it's newsworthy, send it to them, badger them, badger them about get, uh, 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 getting it in because slowly they'll start to get the message. And, and, and trust me, yeah, you know, I used to be on that other end of that uh, a daily newspaper. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so I know, you know, sometimes I would run some things just to shut people up. <laughs> so, so that helps just just that uh, just that constant contact in in, in uh, just uh, making sure uh, that they have those good news stories. So when Mark, so when Marcus comes up and, and says, "Well, you you, uh, you were here for the shooting. Why didn't you cover the other ten things uh, that I sent you press releases on?" They have nothing to say. They have no come come back, and hopefully those things will start to re re register. Uh, Cassandra, Kenneth, do you guys want to jump in on this? I I also need to say that it's is important for me. A lot of people ask, "Why did I move to Trenton?" It's important for me to show up as my authentic self, right? And also to show people a black man going to work, a black man who has his own business. I don't believe once you get successful that you have to leave a certain area, right? Like I don't have to live in the suburbs. I, I, I can come here and be a beacon of hope to the kids within the community. Like, I really think that's important. And, 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 and Clyde, you hit, you hit the nail on the head. Everything's not about money. Yeah, I have to pay my bills like every everyone else, but I, I, I believe and once you do what you love, that money will follow. And people people could smell um, when you're not sincere, when you're just doing it for the money. People can smell that. People won't even want to talk to you or share their story. So I think in order um, to support, it's just like, you know, why, why contact, uh, you know, just the, the traditional outlets, right? Just reach out to people uh, who may be running their own publications and, you know, such as Clyde and um, Cassandra, right? So and let, and let us know your stories. And that, another thing that got me to start the Trenton Journal is because so what I read online was just about the murders and crime that was going on in Trenton. And I'm just like, well, what about the people who are doing the good things that's not being highlighted? And another thing, I will say this too, um, there are a lot of people who are moving into Trenton that's not being reported, that's not from this area and they're buying these homes and everything else. And I'm just like, lack of information, you know, lack of information, you know, because there's, there's a lot of other things that's going on that's not being discussed. In the mainstream me media, you know what I mean? But you, you have a lot of people from, you know, my neighborhood out here who are moving in from Brooklyn to Trenton, New Jersey, you know? So I, I think that it's important for us to continue to tell our stories and share information and, you know, support one another, you know, um, how, how, whatever way you can, whether it's advertising or just sharing your story. I, I first of all, echo um, the points raised by um, um, Clyde and Kenneth, which is, you know, show your support um, whether it's like subscribing or just interacting on social media to help build that sense of community. Um, and, and also, you know, as was mentioned, bring us your stories so that we can, you know, so that we can cover them um, and consider that instead of going to major outlets. And I know, you know, and I'm thankful for um, the community organizations and community members that you know, do are, are doing that. Um, and also I would say, um, from the standpoint of my work with the Center for Cooperative Media, kind of look at um, organiz organizations such as uh, the Center, 
um, that are like research, research community and um, support oriented groups that are there to um, help promote equity in, in media. So like, you know, I just outlined earlier uh, the goals of the South Jersey Information Equity Project. And there are other initiatives at the center and like-minded organizations that are trying, that realize, you know, based on the research that there are um, news deserts and pockets in the state that just don't have um, any outlets or adequate coverage or where there's just um, information gaps that, that need to be um, addressed. So that's another point I would say. Um, additionally, is to, to pay attention to and support um, legislative efforts um, in support of, um, of local media and our news ecosystem. So we um, today we talked earlier about um, reparations um, and, you know, just kind of couching within that discussion, the idea of media reparations. And that's something that, you know, we, I wouldn't say um, this necessarily is an example of, of media reparations, but I will mention um, at, uh, Kenneth earlier said that he received a grant through the Civic Information Bill, um, it, um, Civic Information Consortium um, for his project, for his publication. So these kinds of efforts, um, such as the Civic Information Bill, which was um, passed in 2018, um, which makes it possible for, um, in fiscal year 2021, um, for the consortium to award 500, um, to um, divvy up $500,000 in funding um, to, to support local news coverage um, in the state, and particularly paying attention to parts of the state that have become news deserts. So that's another thing. It's just like kind of you know paying attention to these kinds of um, efforts at the on the legislative front, and to you know support them and champion them as well. And then in that way, and just as the consortium was able to do, and it's an inaugural um, round, is able to provide funding to 14 um, news um, and information initiatives throughout the state. Um, so uh, yeah, those are. Yeah, I guess two of the main points I would say. So it's not it's not exactly media reparations, but it kind of gets at the idea of beginning to provide the funding and make resources available so that smaller publications um, and, and newer publications can can also flourish and begin to carve out more space in in areas um, and in the coverage that have typically been dominated by um, legacy um, legacy publications. Um, that don't uh, sometimes don't factor all, all of our experiences, um, and when they do, um, do so carelessly or in a way that uh, misrepresents us. There was one question about uh, Fox uh, asking about Fox News and the truth, and why. While I don't like, I, or I tend, I, I tend to not bang on other news organizations too much. Fox News alone has done more to damage critical race theory uh, in their mishandling and in, in, in spreading this information about critical race theory than any other news outlet in the country. Now, I will say that I posted a column on, on, on critical race theory, and I will be more than happy. I've, I've given my email address, so I will be more than happy to to delve into that more, I want to give Kenneth and Cassandra just a minute. If you want to jump in on that about Fox News, if you guys just want to jump on, uh, or if you don't want to, I understand. But if you do, uh, you got a minute. I want to jump in real quick. Um, I'm just going to say I don't, I don't watch Fox News, <laughs> so I'm not going to respond <laughs> on that. Cassandra, you're not the only one who's hiring, right? So part of the <laughs> Jersey Civic Consortium grant, um, the proposal that I wrote, what um, if you know anyone who lives in the Trenton or surrounding area, uh, part of the grant proposal, I wanted to I want to train people to tell their own stories in Trenton. So I'm using some of the money that I got from the grant to get people. You don't have to be a reporter. You you can be you can be a community organizer you know sometimes people are intimidated by the word journalist or turned off but if you want to tell your, your your own story you live or in or the surrounding areas of trenton you know please let me know um i'll pay you to train you how to become um to tell your story 
So um, I, I just want to put, put that out there. Okay, wonderful. Uh, uh, let's give you guys about uh, uh, a, a minute or two just to kind of wrap up. If, if Are there any last messages you want to leave the audience with? And either one of you can start, Cassandra or Kenneth. Okay, sure. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for um, joining us for this workshop. Um, it was a pleasure answering the questions and just having this dialogue about Black media in New Jersey. I'll just underscore again the, um, you know, the emphasis of supporting local news. Find out what your, um, you know, there's a new outlet in, in, your, in your community. Find out, you know, what it is, how you can support um, and, and connect with um, editors and publishers. Um, we need more um, Black and Brown um, publishers and publications that are owned by us, um, cultivated by us. So please continue to support. I can, you know, please reach out to me. I think I, I put my email, and my, my email is in the chat. Um, and check us out at um, the Center for Cooperative Media.org. And um, please uh, keep a lookout for Public Square. It's coming in October, we're working on it. It's a very exciting time, but a very hectic and busy time too. Um, and, and thank you to everyone. Um, Thank you to everyone for just listening in, and I look forward to um, being in touch with you in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I just want to thank everyone for allowing me to participate um, on this panel discussion, which I think is really important. Um, what I will say is just everyone who, who, who's watching this, just be critical. Critical in everything that you do, what you watch, what you hear, what you don't see. You know, and, and, and again, this is really important for us to support our own so we can continue to tell our stories. Uh, you can find me at trentonjournal.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, we do exclusive stories uh, on a weekend. We, we send it out to the subscribers and I continue, I hope to continue to do good work and um Thanks again. A lot of parents have children who like write poetry or write raps or write songs. Um, how, do, how do you encourage parents to like nurture um, future writers? What are, what are certain suggestions that can be made? My uh, suggestion, uh, you, know, you know, and what I tell everyone, I, I had a nephew who was thinking about writing a book. And he said, well, I don't know where to start. You know, I, I, I want to do this, but I think about this is important, this is important. And I told him, just start. <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, 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 where, uh, where uh, uh, what you're writing will end up, whether it ends up in the front of the book or the back of the book, just right and things will start to fall into place and i would give that same suggestion if uh, wh whatever medium they're thinking about writing uh, just start in in just allow nature to, to to take its course and let yourself develop i think too many times we we get uh, what what's the phrase uh, paralysis by analysis <laughs> and and we try to so, uh, uh, we, we kind of die on the vine trying to figure out where to start. And uh, the, the, the starting point is, you know, uh, uh, what you're thinking about right now. <laughs> uh, whatever you are thinking about right now, whatever pops into your brain, that is where you start and let everything else fall into place. And, and now for publications like, like mine, I, uh, uh, I would love to be able to to start a column where 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 uh, people would submit like poetry and rhymes, uh, you, you know, uh, frontrunnernewjersey.com and I think other outlets like that are are vehicles that are made to be able to provide that kind of forum and that uh, and, and, and those kind of openings for young people. So it's something that I would encourage. But the most important thing is just starting, just starting. Uh, in uh, in, uh, it, in 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 just letting your, your 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 brain and your interest and your talent take over. Just jump in. I second that. Uh, everything that Clyde has just said. I'll also make a plug for NAACP AXO. I was a participant um, growing up as a teenager in New York City, and 
it was a very rewarding and formative experience for me. And I um, participated in the playwriting and the essay writing categories. And I had like a, a number of mentors who I kept in touch with um, for a few years after um, graduating from high school. So, you know, I can't say enough high praise for um, uh, the AXO program. And thank you for um, everyone involved in all that you do. Um, and yeah, I would just say, so look out for such opportunities to um, expand on your craft and hone, hone your craft. And um, there are are opportunities to contribute to publications too along the way. Um, I know, well, this is at the college level, but Public Square has a partnership with um, the Rutgers um, Journalism um, Department, Rutgers Newark. And so that's, you know, an outlet for students to get clips and experience while they're, um, while they're still, you know, pursuing their, their, the, while they're pursuing their studies. So just kind of look out and, and pay attention, look, be on the lookout for those opportunities. Uh, and I would like to wrap up by saying is that uh, everyone, everyone on here, I hope you would look at our links and our websites and click on all of our websites today. <laughs> Even if we, uh, at the end of the day, tomorrow morning, whatever, uh, click us on and spread the word about what we're doing because that's what we wanna do. We wanna spread the word about what you're doing, but it helps us tremendously to do that when you are clicking us on and reading us and spreading the word about what we're doing. And with that, we would definitely like to thank the Black Media uh, Workshop, uh, Mr. Clyde Hughes from Front Run in New Jersey. Uh, we have Kenneth Miles from Trenton Journal. Um, and then we have uh, Ms. Cassandra Etienne from Center for Cooperative Media. And her link is also posted. Everyone's links are posted in the chat. Thank you guys so much for that. And uh, we would also like to thank Front Runner because Front Runner is one of the um, Black publications that we promoted our state conference convention with. So we absolutely appreciate and love the opportunities to support um, Black-owned media and Black journalists.